This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Station is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Friday, June 5th, this is how we do it, wherever and however you're connected. Wonderful to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with a guy, I believe according to this list, currently ranked higher than Jerem Jordan, uh, and that is from 538.com. His name is Jason Shepard. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that, and thank you, 538.com. Now, for those that don't know, that's like the analytical site, uh, a lot of uh, statistical information. I would really love to know what that data looked like. Like, what was <laughs> what was the data input that, that spit that info out? Your plus minus is off the charts. Well, look, I, uh, I do quite well in the plus minus category. You're given limited minutes, and you come in, and you, all you do is make three pointers. Jason, do you want to? Do you want to explain why we're bringing up 538.com? <laughs> it deals with Steve Young and Joe Montana. We'll leave it at that, okay? Ooh, interesting. We'll leave it at that. Steve Young, Joe Montana. Okay, here's today's show lineup: a guy who pulls his truck while he walks his dog. Tristan Hodge will join us. Why he says all of the 2019 accolades for the offensive line essentially mean nothing. His offensive line coach, Eric Mateos, will join us as well. Is he buying into the O-line being the best position group at BYU? Plus, yes, Steve Young and Joe Montana. Is there a competition there, and is there favor for Steve Young? Plus, are you cool with stadiums at 50% capacity? we got a loaded show, man. we got a loaded there's show. A lot, there's a lot on the, uh, on the show today for a Friday. I like it, though. Now, Jason, with his incredible plus minus, is 100% in on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Indeed, I am, Spencer. ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted out that the NBA draft lottery will take place on August 25th and that the NBA draft will be held on October 15th. Those dates are all predicated on the NBA returning to play in Orlando coming up on July 31st. Uh, Assume one former Cougar Yuli Childs paying close attention to those uh, dates being announced. Uh, yes. A junior for BYU men's golf, Kelton Hirsch, and sophomore women's golf star Alicia May Mateo, both named to the 2019-2020 WCC All-Academic Team. Hirsch rocked a 3.7 GPA over the last academic year. He had two top 20 finishes last season as well, so they clearly could play. Mateo had the Cougars' top GPA with a 3.97, Jason. Wow. Planning a major in business. She secured her first tournament win at Coeur d'Alene. Beautiful up there in Idaho. Tallied five top 15 finishes on the year. Congratulations to both. Starting today, NFL coaches are allowed to return to their training facilities. Before, it was just players. Commissioner Roger Goodell said up to 100 employees can now be in the facilities at one time. That obviously depends on state and local regulations as well. Just got a heads up on this final headline from my boy, Corey Yoshimura, who works for uh, the PGA Tour. He's based in Japan. He pointed out that former BYU golf standout and first-team All-American Peter Quest Quest for Perfection is set to play in the Rocket Mortgage Classic in Detroit this July. Hello, PGA Tour <laughs> debut. That is awesome. Yes. That is that. You know what? And I have no doubt he will do well. Peter Quest, as an amateur, accepts a sponsor exemption to play in this PGA Tour event set for July 2nd through the 5th in Detroit and uh, will be limited to essential personnel. So this is a prestigious invite. Because they're still working through this whole COVID-19 situation. I am stoked for Peter. We've had him on the show multiple times. The dude has the mindset to be a star on the PGA Tour. Yeah, this this is a guy you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot of during his PGA Tour career. He's the guy that was a first-team All-American. And during the NCAA championship round, double-eagled the first hole, a par five, and was like, eh. I didn't finish very well, so it doesn't really matter. And his name is Peter Quest. (laughs) It is an awesome name. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Three capable quarterbacks. Three quarterbacks who all made multiple starts in the 2019 BYU football season and won at least one of those starts. Just random. Three starting quarterbacks all that started multiple games and won at least one of those games. Zach Wilson, of course, the majority starter. 
But Jaron Hall had his go in Tampa and then a win in Logan before being knocked out of the game with a concussion. Baylor Romney beat Boise State. Was it even hard, Jerem Jordan? And he beat Liberty. It's all good, right, Jason? Or is it? Are we putting too much stock into Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney specifically based off their combined four starts? Look, the quick answer is yes, because the sample size is small. However... Because the sample size is small, that's all you can look at. So what you have to do then is take what you can see and try and evaluate it. From what we've been able to see, they both impressed. I still maintain, and I've mentioned this multiple times, forgetting the the UMass performance, which, and I I would say anybody, I mean, like, it wouldn't have happened if I were quarterback. Like, I couldn't have done a great job against UMass, but, like, BYU just throttled the UMass. Yeah. In in a game The Cougars could have won the game at UMass if you were the quarterback, Jason. No, nah, again, I, I'm not sure on that. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not willing to go no, there. No, no, that you could, you could you just hand the ball off every time around behind the offensive line and <laughs> okay, they still, that they I could, still win. That the I game. could do. But the first half at Utah State was was, in my opinion, the best half we saw out of a quarterback. Now that was Jaron Hall that started that game. He was dominating. So all we can look at is, is, is the four games that they got into. Even though the sample size is small, that's all we have. Romney, his win came over Boise State, a ranked team. Everybody was like, oh, my gosh, you know, Zach can't go and Jaron Hall can't go. Baylor Romney is going to have to start against, against a, a ranked Boise State team, a team that BYU typically struggles against. And, and Baylor came in and just carved them up. It wasn't so. W- would more games solidify those numbers? Like we we won't know those things, or would they expose weaknesses that maybe we didn't get to see? I, I don't know. What we do know is when both players got in and had an opportunity, they performed at a high level. That's what we know, and that bodes well for whatever situation plays out in terms of the quarterback in the upcoming season. The more I think about this, and we started to go down this road yesterday with Blaine Fowler. Um, I was leaning towards, yeah, it's just too, too little of a sample size. But, Jason, I'm buying this. I'm all in. I'm buying this stock right now. I've seen enough between Jaron Hall's spring game performance and how he handled himself playing baseball and being the number one guy through spring football last year while Zach Wilson was recovering from his shoulder surgery. And then Baylor Romney. People forget what Baylor Romney did against South Florida. You're watching a Jaron Hall highlight on BYU TV right now. Baylor Romney had to come in in the worst possible situation in Tampa and try and move BYU into position to win that game. And you know what he did? Exactly that. He marched BYU into the red zone as a third-string quarterback on the road in his first-ever action and gave BYU a chance to win the game. It didn't happen, but there were some questions about the play calling at the end of that game. Not Baylor Romney's fault. He did his job. I'm pretty sure that if Baylor Romney skydived, he wouldn't crack a smile. There would be no emotion. He's just so level, so even keel, and he's a great decision maker. In fact, Blaine Fowler said he's probably the best decision maker of the quarterbacks on the field right now. Not the athlete that Zach Wilson or Jaron Hall is, but the best decision maker. So I, I love what Baylor Romney did, and I love the flair that Jaron Hall brought to the game in Tampa with his run into the end zone, connecting with Dax Milne, and then, of course, he had that dynamite first-half performance in Logan before he unfortunately had to leave the game. I've seen enough. I've seen enough from these two quarterbacks in pressure pack situations that I'm fine with it. I am buying this stock. Regardless of the numbers that, that Jaron and Baylor put up, The thing that really makes me uh, most impressed with their situation was something you brought up. The moment wasn't too big for them. They didn't look overwhelmed. They looked comfortable and in control, especially, and I agree with you 100% with Baylor Romney. Like The game against Boise State, you would not know the situation just by looking at him. You would not know that this is something that, to that point, he had not done. Like It was insane how just... Even keeled he was, and matter of fact, and just going to work and doing what needed to be done. I think that's what impressed me the most about both of them is that when they were put in the situation, they, it, they were not overwhelmed by it. And I think that certainly bodes well for both of them. Yeah, the only nervy moments I ever saw from Jaron Hall or Baylor Romney really were when Jaron had to come in at the end of the Toledo game, which was 
an impossible scenario. Right. Okay. Zach Wilson breaks his thumb, desperation, Hail Mary effort. Not going to expect much there. He's a little bit nervy against South Florida when the game began, but he calmed down, settled in, and clearly the nerves were done when he got yeah. to Logan. Baylor Romney, good grief. I, I was waiting for the deer in headlights moment in Tampa, <laughs> and it never really came. Just like, all right, this is, we got to go win the game. Right, well, let's just go do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm buying that stock. Topic number two, with the hope that sports returns to action in the next few months, the question still remains, will fans be in attendance? And if fans are there, how many will we see? Well, the governor of Texas announced that the state of Texas is now going to allow sports venues to be filled, filled with fans up to 50% capacity. Tell me shocked that it's Texas that's <laughs> so starting this conversation. Most of everybody that's mentioned like a percentage, it's been right around 25 <laughs> Texas now is going to allow 50% capacity of the venue. Okay. Spencer, would you go to Lavelle Edwards Stadium right now for an event with 50% capacity? Yes, I'd go with 1% capacity. I'd go with 25. I'd go with 50. I'd go with 100% capacity. I would go. That said, I'm not going to be ignorant to the fact that there are people that are suffering from pre-existing conditions mm-hmm. that are more susceptible to really take a downturn if they do have the coronavirus. So uh, I, for me, it's like, yes, I feel like I'm healthy enough. I've had my checkup. Even if I got it, I feel like I would recover from it. But there are people that need to take extra precautions. So everybody's going to view this differently. So me saying that, yeah, I would go doesn't mean anybody should go. No, just be wise. Be smart. You all, people don't give themselves enough credit for being smart. Like, Please utilize your heads, utilize your brains. I know you're capable. Make the decision right now for me. Yes, I would go at any capacity to watch a game in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And I don't think I'm being reckless in that. No, no. Um, I just feel confident that the majority of the population would be able to get through this virus and this sickness, much like they would be able to get through the flu uh, or any other strain of that. We are learning more and more. I think a vaccine's coming up. It's going to be on the way. It'll be close. Um, yeah, I, I would go right now, but I, I mean, I say that cautiously because I know that there are people that need to be very careful. Yes, there are people, people with pre-existing conditions, people of a certain age that, that need to be a little bit more careful in general. It, it's probably not something that they would decide to go to. And it's, and, and again, it boils down to everybody making the decision that is best for them. You and I are on the same page with this. I would go at 50% at 100% capacity. I would go. It, it's, it's not something that would keep me away. But again, that's for me personally, and everybody's going to have to make that decision. The other thing that, that's interesting about this is not every venue is going to be able to have the same capacity. It's all going to be based off of – there's not a uniform um, – rule going out in college football that every stadium is going to be because each state is dealing with their own set of circumstances with the pandemic. You know, here in the state of Utah, we to this point have been very, very lucky that we have not been hit as hard as say teams on the earth that would be playing on the East coast. So we may have a higher capacity to at least decide to come than, than a team on, on the East Coast. So a lot's going to depend on, on that as well. So, I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, there will be people who want no part of crowds for a very long time. Even if things get clear, they're not going to want to be in crowds, and that's their choice. That's fine. There are also going to be people that you and I would be one of these that because of the physical you know shape that we're in and our age – it's, it's a risk I'm willing to take. So, again, it boils down to what's right for you. But for me, I would go. Yes, we're pioneering through this. And clearly the medical experts in Studio B here, Jason yeah. Shepard and but Spencer Lynch. But it's not, it's, it's not that. Like you take We know for, nothing. Yeah, we, we don't. We're, like, we're not doctors. We don't even play them on TV or the radio. <laughs> but, again, it's just a personal decision. There will be people that aren't going to go to sports for a long time. And I understand it. But there are a lot of people that want to go, and if they give, if the opportunity is given to them, then they should have the opportunity to go if they want. Well, and for what it's worth, uh, I'm on board with what health officials are yes. recommending yes. and saying. And right now, uh, the latest I've heard is, well, uh, there is going to be a spike and a peak, but why not try and develop the herd immunity during the warmer months? Okay, so. 
I don't know. It's it, the rhetoric of this thing changes every day, much like our feelings do for BYU football from one week to the next. Beat one Boise, week to the next. Beat Boise State. One day oh, to the next. BYU. <laughs> we can beat anybody. You know. BYU just lost to South Florida. They're not going to win more than four games this year. It's terrible. Okay. Yes. Th- th- we're all, we're all over the map, man. All over the map. But we just hope everyone's health uh, is good and that they're safe. And let's watch college football. Bring it on. Let's go. Our question of the day. What is your confidence level in either Jaron Hall or Baylor Romney based on the four starts that we have all collectively seen? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Nomad Coog answers on Twitter, 100% confident in Baylor Romney. The only reason I'm skeptical about Jaron Hall is the concussions he had last year. He's devastating when healthy, but his exposure to a big hit is conducive with the way he plays. If he can avoid the big hit, hashtag sky's the limit, hashtag go Cougs. I think that's fair. Jaron's game is different, but can they rein that back? We had the same conversation every year with Taysom, Taysom Hill. Hill. That's right. And they rein it back, and should they rein it back? Does it make him less effective if you do that? That's uh, that's a tough one for the coaches to figure out. Coming up, a Hall of Famer is the best to wear, number 24 at BYU. And we begin our BYU football position group previews with the offensive line and their position coach, Eric Mateos. Is he buying the love from Pro Football Focus? I'm betting not. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest voiceover with Greg and Shep, two great guys. Greg and I visit with BYU alum and longtime network sportscaster Todd Harris about his 30-year career covering some of the biggest sporting events from around the world. You can watch this in every episode of voiceover with Greg and Shep on the BYU TV Sports social media platform. Only one of those guys is ranked by 538.com. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I love spreading erroneous news. By, uh, Please, go on. It, sh- <laughs> it, it puts me in a great light, so talk away. Oh, we are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside the famous Jason Shepard. <laughs> uh, we're under three months away from the college football season opening up for BYU. In fact, how many days? Countdown to the youths. 90 days away. Yes, 90 days away from BYU and Utah scheduled to open the season on September 3rd. Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Zoom is BYU offensive line coach Eric Mateos. 90 days away, coach. How do you feel when I say that? Didn't didn't even have any clue on how many days there were. So I think you guys are going to be responsible for giving me the updates as we get closer spoken like a true coach i love it i love it it's taking it one day at a time yes i'm not i just i don't i can't count quite that high that's the problem (laughs) coach we appreciate you being with us and uh, i want to start uh, our conversation with a bit of a, a serious matter if you will you've been very active on social media supporting hashtag black lives matter and uh your desire for systemic change and abolishing racism um I know that it's it's a tough subject to broach, but you haven't shied away from that. Uh, why is that, and uh, and what are you doing to try and spread the message even more? Yeah, well, you know, a big reason of why I haven't been chosen to be shy is uh, um, in 2016 when I was working at LSU was the shooting of Alton Sterling in the summer of 2016, which led to um, many protests around the country, including in Baton Rouge, obviously. And, and being around our players at that time and seeing uh, their pain and, and just, you know, I remember we had a meeting when the Baton Rouge PD came and talked to our team and just seeing the emotions involved on both sides of that, that kind of changed me forever. And uh, it really changed my perspective on things about being silent, you know, as coaches and uh, especially people in the sports industry. A lot of times they everybody wants everyone to just do their job and, and, um, you know, after experiencing that a few years ago, I just decided that if, if something like this came up again, I wasn't just going to do the politically uh, perfect thing and just be quiet and, and stick to sports. And, and that's why, I, that's why I've chosen not to just stay silent. Well, and, and with a lot of people speaking out, you know, obviously a lot of positive things are, 
are coming from that. How, how, how is the football team in general responding to these issues? You know, uh, there, there is going to be a lot of positives. It's still, um, it's going to take time. I think you know, I've had discussions with, with players in my unit um, that, uh, that aren't white. And so the, the response is good. You know, it, I think everybody just has a different feeling about it. And that's normal when you have a team of a hundred something people, not everybody is even remotely close to growing up the same way. So I think, I think right now it's important as coaches to listen. And I think that's what um, Tom Homo has encouraged us as, as coaches to do is just listen and, and be there. And cause some guys are going to need us, need us more than others. And as long as we're, we're there for them and we can just provide an ear first, an open ear, then that can lead to a lot of things getting worked through, especially on our campus. Eric Mateos with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, we appreciate those comments and uh, your continued efforts there. And seriously, uh, a huge rise and shout out to you for uh, taking that stance. Uh, now we'll move to the football aspect of our interview and you coach arguably the strongest position group of the 2020 squad. How would you define the BYU offensive line as a group in 2020? Well, I, I, I want to say I'm trying to base it off of six practices in spring football. And I want to say I think it's just more unified, I think, is a way uh, that something that I saw in the spring. I thought we were, you know, and, and uh, you know, I use, I use this, this phrase where we got to be more of a operate as one. And I thought during the spring practices, that was something I saw was, I saw us be physical as one. And it's because sometimes you have one or two guys that are standing out with their effort and physicality. But I really thought in the spring, we took a step in the opportunities we had to look like a physical group a physical unit rather than just have a couple physical players. So uh, what I want it to be is uh, physical and gritty. That's what I want it to be. I think we're on our way. James Impey, Brady Christensen, both guys receiving a lot of notoriety in the off season, specifically from pro football focus. Talk a little bit about those guys, your expectations for them, but also what makes them worthy of the accolades they're receiving? Well, um, well, so both guys, I'll just be, I'll, I'll just give the football answers. So Brady, um, Brady is, uh, is a very high level pass blocker. Uh, Brady is, uh, I think they graded him as one of the top five pass blocking tackles in the country. And he is, he's a very good pass blocker. He's got, uh, we really worked last summer. We worked on his set. We changed it from his redshirt freshman year, we changed his setup a little bit to give himself a little bit more, um, I guess, uh, opportunities to be physical in pass protection. And I think that really helped him. So Brady's an elite pass, a uh, pass blocker. He's a above average run blocker. Uh, I think for him to get to where he wants to be on a, be a first or second day pick, then he needs to become a, a, a good, a good run blocker. He doesn't need to become great to be a draft pick, but he needs to become good. And he's really close to that. And so that's kind of where his edge lies is that he's just an elite pass protector. And uh, with James, James is a, is a very good pass protector as well, but James is just, uh, he really understands body positioning. And that's, that's something for centers. That's a very underrated under talked about, aspect that is really critical is just especially when you are the one that's closest to the defensive lineman you know a lot of people don't realize all the other old linemen are about a foot two feet back from the line of scrimmage and the center is right there smelling the football so uh, being able to have short area quickness and and understand body leverage is really important for center and he does that and he has elite football iq so those guys have earned recognition and i am happy for them but I think both of them know that um, this is a what have you done for me lately business, and that's got to be our mentality moving forward to 2020. And that leads me to my next question, Coach. Uh, Eric Mateos, offensive line coach for BYU football with us. Uh, those guys don't seem like the type to let these type of numbers and accolades, if you will, go to their heads. Why are you confident that this group won't, quote, unquote, drink the poison and be ready to go in 2020? 
Well, I, you know, I'm just, to be blunt about it, I'm not going to let them drink it. It's, it's just, here's the thing. No matter, no matter what, when people say nice things about you, it softens you. And, and and you lose some of your hard edges that you have in your mentality and your approach to playing the game, Lord, especially playing the line. And so I think the, the the key to just us as a unit is no one can get soft edges and and take a comp. We got to be able to take a compliment, but still have in the back of our mind, yeah, thanks for that compliment. I appreciate that, but I know about five things that I am not satisfied where I'm at with regards to those things. So I think as long as we maintain that edge and I'm not going to let them have it. I mean, here's the thing that's, that people don't realize is I might come across as being a little bit tough, you know, when I talk about the guys, but there's no one that builds our guys up more than me and, and pumps them up full of sometimes false bravado in our, in our meeting room. I mean, I'm all about building confidence in our meeting rooms and uh, not tearing guys down. And that's our goal. But uh, I'm going to be the one that, that gives them permission to feel confident. I don't want it to be, you know, everybody's uh, aunt's, sister's, brother's cousin that, that sends them a Facebook message about how awesome they are. So to me, that's, that's kind of the point. Coach, who's the BYU offensive lineman that right now we're not talking about, but we will be by the end of the season? That's a great question. Um, I would say just someone just based off of people not mentioning not mentioning him very much um, and having the ability to contribute to our team. Uh, two guys really is Mo Unatoa and Joe Tukuafu. Uh, Joe made the switch to O-line during the fall. And he's up over 300 pounds. And Mo is a talented transfer we got who had to sit out last year. You know, neither of these guys have started and played games for BYU. So I understand why no one's bringing them up. They don't deserve to be brought up. But as their coach, I'll I'll bring them up and say that both guys have have an opportunity to really help our line that haven't really had an opportunity to do so in the past. Depth is always a key word, so it's nice to hear those names and uh, think about those guys helping out, a group that uh, is already perceived as mature and experienced. Um, how is the health of your group overall? Health is really good. Uh, you know, obviously last year was a catastrophe in a way as far as injuries go, but health is good. You know, a couple guys had to get uh, get a couple things fixed in the off season, but Going into training camp, we should be almost full strength. We might have one guy that won't be ready to go on day one of camp, and that's okay. Like you said, we do have some numbers there. And we also have some young guys coming home. Um, we got some young guys that are joining us from uh, from their missions. That So it'll be a good opportunity to see those guys get thrown in the fire when we start training camp. All right, I'm really excited to ask you about this last question here, and I'm sure you've seen this. Uh, The University of Maine put out a a season schedule poster that featured an offensive lineman. He was reaching for the ball, and he had his big gut hanging out of his (laughs) his jersey. It was really fun. Can BYU get in on this movement of the Peisman Trophy, guys? Is this something we can see? Well, I think when you talk about the Peisman Trophy, first off, it's probably the biggest honor in collegiate sports. Um, (laughs) Secondly, uh, of course, our O-line, actually Harris Lachance put in our O-line group text, why have we not done this? And um, so I would just say there are a couple of comments about it. I think number one, I think you'll see – possibly some uh, some uh, Brigham Young versions of that in the future. And secondly, it's our goal to win. The, we want one of our guys to win the Pisman Trophy. You know, <laughs> we had, we whether it's, we got we to gotta design a, a touchdown play for one of our tackles on a tackle throwback or a tackle reverse, but that's a huge award. And that's really what we have. We have a, a picture of the Pisman Trophy up in our meeting room. That's a huge goal of ours. I love, love it. it. Love it. I love it so much. Okay, uh, we got to get the athletic marketing guys, uh, Dave Broberg, David Almadova, working on that stuff. Okay, we'll we'll head that front up for you, Coach. 
Yeah, well, I, I, I'm I going to have to check and see if the guys are supposed to shave their stomachs before, so I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to look into it. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, you're a class act, and we wish you good health, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the near future. Appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Eric Mateos on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. That's great. If you've not seen that poster, by the way, you gotta you got to search that one out. That's Just really search funny. search Main Football. Yeah poster yeah i promise it'll be the first thing that pops up coming up well we talked to the coach now how about we talk to the player tristan hodge coming up on the program plus the best to ever wear number 24 he's got some world series swag jason Mm. this is BYU sports nation what's up cosmo with the bat on the latest BYU Sports Nation right now, we remember the dominant moments of the 2020 men's volleyball season, but it's time to remember the wacky moments, too. Check it out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. He is Jason. I am Spencer. And this is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Men's Basketball. ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted out that the NBA draft lottery will take place on August 25th and that the NBA draft will be held on October 15th. Those dates are all predicated on the NBA returning to play in Orlando on July 31st. Oh, please. BYU junior of the men's golf team Kelton Hirsch and sophomore women's golf star Alicia May Mateo both named to the 2019-2020 West Coast Conference all-academic team. Hirsch with a 3.7 GPA over the last academic year. She had two top 20 finishes. He, I should say, had two top 20 finishes. Mateo had the Cougars' top GPA with a 3.97, planning on majoring in business. She had a tournament win in Coeur d'Alene and tallied five top 15 finishes last season. Football. Starting today, NFL coaches are allowed to return to their training facilities. Commissioner of the National Football League, Roger Goodell, said that up to 100 employees can now be in the facilities at one time, obviously depending on state and local regulations. Golf. Yeah, let's go back with some more golf. Former BYU standout and first-team All-American Peter Quest set to play in the PGA Tours Rocket Mortgage Classic in Detroit in early July. Hello, professional debut. Quest is an amateur accepting a sponsor exemption to play in the event set for July 2nd through the 5th. And uh, still, because of COVID-19 situation, will be limited to essential personnel. Very excited for Peter. Yeah, that's awesome news. Bring on the best to wear it. We're counting up to 99, one number each show, and determining who was the best athlete to wear each number at BYU. Today, we hit number 24, but maybe it was a lack of hits yes. that made 24 great. It was not the hitting, it was the pitching yes. of Jack Morris. Played at BYU in 1975, 1976. Uh, his BYU stats, 10 and 9 was his record. Had a 4.89 ERA with 106 strikeouts. He was first team all whack in 1976, and then he was an honorable mention in 1975. He did this twice. 15 strikeouts in one game. That's the third most strikeouts in a single game in BYU history. He's drafted in the fifth round by the Tigers in 76. He played in Major League Baseball from uh, 77 to 94, and he played for four different teams. He played for the Tigers, the Twins, the Blue Jays, and the Indians. And and I think I probably personally remember him mostly with the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where, by the way, shout out to Mark Durant, the only Toronto Blue Jays fan I know outside of Maverick Buffo, who's in the organization. Amazing. Four-time World Series champion across three different teams. That's impressive. Like, you win four World Series titles – in general, it's amazing. In a 10-year span, you win four with three different teams. That's incredible. That is unbelievable. And that's why he was an inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2018. He's a Hall of Famer, Jason. Yeah, and, and to take his World Series performances to another level, let's get to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Jack Morris is the only pitcher in Major League Baseball history to have a 100% win percentage in two separate World Series. That'll get you a plaque in Cooperstown. (laughs) Yes. By the way, very underrated mustache, Jack Morris. Oh, man. We thought Eric Mateos' mustache was nice. Uh, Jack Morris took it next level in the 80s, man. 
Magnum PI status, right? Absolutely. He was in Detroit, too, which is where Magnum came from. No hitter on April 7th, 1984. One of my previous uh, technical directors when I was working in Grand Junction, Colorado, would no question. Every time I brought up BYU, he would say, I witnessed Jack Morris's no hitter as a kid in 1984. He told me that story probably 70 times. You know what? I didn't care because it was BYU and it was Jack Morris. You're like, yeah, I'll listen to it again. I don't have a problem with that. Let's do it, man. Number 47 uh, in the majors retired by the Detroit Tigers, but the great, the greatest to ever wear number 24 at BYU. Coming up, are you buying COVID-19 helping the BYU offense this year? And uh, one of the BYU offensive linemen is an elite multitasker. You'll understand why next. Tristan Hodge joins us. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The BYUSN Reviewables are back. Tune in on Friday, June 12th, as we deep dive into the 1980-81 BYU Hoops run to the Elite Eight. It's coming up next Friday, June 12th. On BYU Sports Nation. A warm welcome back to BYU Sports Nation and Studio B. Warm being the operative word because we're pushing towards summertime. It's great, isn't it? Even though we're supposed to hit like a significant cold spell over the weekend, then like right back up near 100 next week. It's called the Utah exception, Jason. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Randomness. Uh, We also welcome in on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, outstanding BYU offensive lineman. Tristan Hodge. Tristan, uh, Tristan, welcome back to the program. Uh, it's great to have you with us, man. How are you? I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's great to be back, you know, even over Zoom. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. It's good. Okay, so I was kind of expecting to see a quarantine beard. Um, did you have one at any point during social distancing? Of course I did. I was, uh, I was really sad when they, uh, when they brought us all back to say, hey, we expect you all shaved. And I was like, wow, that, that really hurts. So I... Uh, I cried. I cried as I sat and shaved over my trash can, just sitting here buzzing it all the way. I was like, "All this hard work." How did it compare? To, like, yeah, how did it compare to your dad's? Oh, it was terrible. Nothing compares to my dad's. I mean, I, I can only hope one day that I can grow something like that. But he told me that you know what? The great thing is, it'll grow back. <laughs> you know, Tristan. In, in terms of not measuring up, so to speak, it's, you're talking about beards. You are making the rest of us look really, really bad on a lot of different levels. Not only during this time are you getting in the exercise, you're taking the dog for a walk, but you post it on Instagram. You're all, you're doing it all while pulling a truck. I mean, can, like, you, can you just do the walk or just the exercise, or can you not make us all look bad because we can't pull a truck when we go on a walk? It was uh, it was more peer pressure for my dog's end, you know. He's like, "Hey, you need a little exercise too, big boy." Um, uh, but as you can kind of see there, his uh, he's a little old, so he was kind of lagging behind there. Almost gets hit by the truck a couple times, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like a little. Uh, I was like, you know, I, I might as well get some heavy movement um, going because, you know, not a lot of not a lot of that going around. So I was like, I guess I'll push a truck today. But you look like you should be on one of those strongman events and change your name to like Magnus. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Maybe that's the ne- maybe that's the next maybe that's the next step after after football's said and done. Just go go all the way up to like Iceland and start working out with like <laughs> half Thor Bjorns and all of them. I love it. Magnus Hodge with us on BYU <laughs> Sports Nation. Hey, how's your health and recovery as you approach uh, the upcoming season? Uh, essentially, three months away. You know, it's it's actually been really good. I, I like to say that this little quarantine was kind of like a, a blessing in disguise, um, giving me that little extra time to recuperate and recover all my body. Um, you know, so, I mean, I feel better than ever um, coming back. I've You know, best I've felt in a long time, so I'm like, I'm ready to go. You know, I feel great. What have you learned about yourself over the last three months with with sports largely shut down? Um, it's definitely the... Uh, well, creativity for one and just finding a way um, to do things, you know, it was, uh, you know, for a time I'm like, you know, there's a, uh, everything shut down, there's no gyms. And that's usually where we live during this time. So I had to kind of improvise. Luckily I had a warehouse in Idaho Falls that had a, you know, gym stuff for sale. So uh, me and my dad went kind of nuts there. So, you know, we found our way to get those workouts in. And um, it also, you know, it taught me the importance of just spending time with family, you know, I've, I got almost two months in hanging out with my parents and, you know, it was, it was a great time. You know, I love spending time with them and it was, it was nice. Tristan Hodge with us on BYU sports nation at any point uh, during this pandemic situation, did you get tired of your dad, Marty? No, 
it's it's so different every day I'm, i wake up there's something new i you know i i usually i rarely usually i wake up to an alarm but uh you know sometimes i wake up to him singing you hear him upstairs singing in the kitchen or <laughs> usually i mean I, I i slept in the basement so i hear his heavy feet in the morning i don't know if he was trying to wake me up or not um, uh, but it's definitely a it's a good experience going home and, and spending time with him the offensive line has received a lot of off-season accolades showing up on a lot of lists. People really high on what you guys can do this season. First and foremost, what's your opinion on some of those accolades that the team is getting? And then specifically with your position group, what, what do you make of it? And where do you think you can get even better in 2020? You know, um, uh, last season was definitely uh, interesting with all the the injuries and stuff like that, and you know, guys having to fill in depth wise. And that's one thing that we've, you know, we're happy to have is the depth. The guys ready to step up. You know, when their numbers called, they were ready to go. Um, and seeing all the accolades, yeah, it's in, it's incredible to see. You know how they excelled and how this unit has has done so well that last year. That being said, that was also that was 2019. You know, 2020. There is no accolades to our name this year, so it's kind of starting from ground zero um, in terms of that. But you know, I'm really, I'm really, uh, I'm enthusiastic about what these guys are going to do this this year. Um, we've all been working hard, and you know, seeing quarantine. I know every single one of them was finding ways to work out and get better on their own. Um, and now that we're back together, it's really shown. And these guys are dedicated. And, and you know, I think we're going to accomplish a lot of great things this year. You are playing for, obviously, Kalani Satake, but your offensive line coach is Eric Mateos. We talked to him earlier. How would you explain Coach Mateos and his field side manner in practice and games? <laughs> it's definitely very unique. Um, uh, yeah, he's very uh, – he can be very chill on those some days. And you can tell when, the, you know, he's ready to – kind of get on us a little bit, you know, and that demeanor changes. But actually what I like in his field side demeanor, demeanor in um, uh, games, he's very calm because he, he knows that, you know, games are already uh, high stress enough. Um, he says he's not going to add to that, but you can definitely tell he's got an intensity. He turns it on and off, um, you know, but, and, you know, like film room and stuff like that is definitely, uh, he keeps it very interesting. So yeah, it's, it's definitely fun playing under him. You mentioned the depth at offensive line and how many guys have been able to get experience and, and, and be able to play and really show what they can do. Is there, is there an offensive lineman that maybe is a little under the radar that maybe people don't necessarily know a whole lot about right now or that isn't getting talked about right now? Is there somebody under the radar that you think is, is ready to really take that next step? You know, I think there's a lot of those guys across the F offensive line. I mean, this is a definitely a very uh, underrated group since this last few years. We've started to get that, you know, that publicity, and people are starting to see what we're really capable of. Um, I'd say that this entire O line is is ready to take that next step. There's a lot of guys across the front five, and I mean, I should even say front seven because we have, you know, seven starter capable guys, um, you know, going in. So I mean, it's that's one thing is there's a lot of these guys that are ready to take that next step and you're about to hear their names a lot more um, this year. And that's what we are uh, aiming to do is for people to remember our names this year. A couple of names we've heard on a regular basis over uh, this spring and uh, into summertime is are James Empey and Brady Christensen. Now, which of those two guys are more likely to let uh, the pro football focus love go to their head, James or Brady? <laughs> I don't want to be the, the, the one of those. Cause I, I think both of them are uh, extraordinarily <laughs> humble. They don't want to drink that poison. Um, uh, as we like to say, so I, I think they're, they're good at, uh, keep it. They like to joke about it a lot, um, which is good. You know, that means they're not letting it get um, too serious in their heads. Um, and they understand that, you know, accolades for last year and this year are completely different. So they're, they're always ready to come show up and, and go to work. All right. Let's bring this back full circle to the pulling of the truck. Every offensive lineman is attached to a truck. Who pulls it the farthest? Who wins that battle? You know what? We got a lot of strong guys, but I, I'd, love to, I'd love to say that it'd be a, a battle between our two of our pound for pound strongest guys is Shannon Herring and, and, uh, and Kiefer Longston. I'd like to think that that'd be a fun battle to watch, see who would pull it the longest. But uh, at the end of the day, when it comes to stamina, it's all will. So that we'll, we'll, we'd see. That'd be a pretty tight match. And I'd like to throw myself in that race as well. Oh, who who can deny Magnus Hodge? We need an offensive line strongman <laughs> competition at BYU. Let's do this thing. Let's do it. Let's go on the fields right here. We'll set it up. We'll film it. We'll, we'll have a whole lot of fun with it. I'm uh, sensing a segment on the yes. show. Something with Y Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> yes. there, there are things that we yes. can do, Tristan. Hey, uh, we wish you the best of luck as you push forward towards the season. Stay healthy. Stay strong. 
And let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma, man, for good things ahead. Hey, I appreciate it, you guys. Thanks for having me. You got it. Tristan Hodge on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why. We show how. And I'm pretty sure he was driving the truck that he was pulling. No, that, that was the truck. That's that, the truck. Yeah, and he had parked. He had parked. He was safe. He was safe. He, the car was was stationary. It was not moving. But, yes, that is the, that is the vehicle. Hey, Jason, safety first, right? Safety first. We've learned that We've over learned, the last couple of years. We have learned yes, that. We, yes, we have. Coming up, buy, sell, or hold. Steve Young greater than Joe Montana? Uh, is any BYU fan not buying <laughs> Steve Young there? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation continues with your daily reminder. The show is available anytime on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. You can also download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget while you're there, subscribe, rate, and review the program. Let's roll out buy, sell, or hold. Jason, I'll start. Number one, buy, sell, or hold. COVID quarantine helping the BYU football offense. And I premise it with this. Steve Clark, tight ends coach, said to the Deseret News, I actually feel like we are farther along than normal. We've had more time, because we didn't recruit, to actually get better prepared. I've had a lot of days with not a lot to do, so we got our installation in through this time probably more meticulously and with greater detail than we would have otherwise, end quote. You're buying, selling, or holding the quarantine, helping the BYU football offense. I'm going to hold it and, and because I think it's, it's kind of a balancing act. I completely understand what Coach Clark is talking about. I mean, if, if you feel like you've had much more preparation, get a little more meticulous with it, and be able to have the time to really get into it, and I, I think maybe you're ahead of the curve on that. But where you're behind the curve is the on-the-field stuff. You didn't have your full spring. You didn't have those things to, to maybe implement some of these things along the way. So I think that, that goes the other direction. So you take maybe being ahead in one, below in the other, Go right in the middle with hold. That's yeah, kind of where my thought process I'm is. I'm totally hold. We won't know, really, until we start to see full speed reps. And those are hard to find even in fall camp. Like, maybe within the scrimmages, and then we revisit this and ask Coach Clark and the offensive coaches, hey, uh, is all this offseason implementation paying off right now? We're, we're not going to know, really, I think, until the actual games start about this. So I'm 100% hold on this. All right, buy, sell, or hold. The 538.com article uh, concluding with the sentence, quote, but the evidence we do have points pretty clearly in one direction. Young, meaning Steve Young, was the better player, end quote. This is an article comparing Steve Young and Joe Montana. Buy, sell, or hold. Wow. Steve Young, better than Joe Montana. Somewhere in 49er Nation, I hope somebody gets a hold of this. Okay. Well, I'm sure it's <laughs> sure it's been talked about on sports radio. Because oh. that, that's some high heat right there. That, that's a hot take. Joe Montana, along with Tom Brady, is considered one of the GOATs, yep. right? Yep. I mean, he's the guy that figured it out, hit Dwight Clark for the catch, started that amazing run under Bill Walsh through all of the 80s with the 49ers. For me, Steve Young is the better athlete mm-hmm. uh, and was the better passer. Okay, buy, sell, or hold. <sighs> Man. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it strictly because... Because you feel the pressure on being I, on this show. Absolutely, <laughs> that is the case. Look, I look. you and I, it's funny. We have not had this conversation. You and I are on the same page. Because of his abilities, you add in the ability to run. I think from a player standpoint, I think he is a better player than Joe Montana. I So I am buying it. I think you would be hard-pressed if given, like, polling people and say you have one game to win, you're taking Young or Montana, I think... I think a lot of people would take Joe Montana. Of course. But in terms of factor. in terms of a player, I, I don't disagree. Steve Young, because of his ability, he, he can give you more on the field than Montana because of his ability to move. Montana's accomplishments greater. Young is the better athlete. Agreed. Agreed. All right, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Speaking of quarterbacks, what's your confidence level in either Jaron Hall or Baylor Romney based on four combined starts? Mike Maservi on Facebook says, I'm convinced both could carry the mantle of quarterback leadership. I especially like Romney, but I think both have a fire in them for the game. Okay, today's rise and shout outs. I'm going to give mine to the National Basketball Association. I love the NBA. I am so happy that this is coming back in July, training camps before. I'm so happy. Rise and shout out to the league. I'm giving mine to the main college football program for bringing up 
the Peisman Trophy poster, Very and nice. it might happen at BYU now. So they get my rise and shout out. Our thanks to today's guests, Eric Mateos and Tristan Hodge. Speaking of the offensive, line. yeah, conversation continues twenty four seven on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Tim McTire. We'll see you on Monday for BYUSN. Go Cougs.